Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Laurence and I post art videos every two weeks. You'll see a few book reviews because I got some very interesting books lately and I really want to share them with you. Most of them are art related, there's one that is not. But today I want to talk about this book. This is Hand Built by a fellow YouTuber, Lily Maitzig. I hope I pronounced your name right. Sorry about that if I don't. So I've been following her for a year or two. Her channel is all about pottery, her pottery business. Her videos are so beautiful and I love the pottery she does. I love how she explains stuff. And she recently came out with this book, Hand Built, which is all about how to do hand built pottery, basically. So pottery without a turning wheel. If you've been following me for a little bit, you know that I'm this close to starting my pottery era and become addicted to pottery. I really want to start. It's just that I had some questions about logistics. Pottery, building stuff, buying clay, buying some tools. I can't understand. It's the what comes after that I'm a bit confused about. And I thought that this book would be perfect. First of all, disclaimer. I'm not going to show you every pages because I think that if you're interested in this book, you should get it. Lily put so much effort in this book. She's a small creator and I don't want you to be able to take screenshots. So if you want it, please buy it. It's really not that expensive. I got it on Amazon for 40 Canadian dollars and it's a big book. As you can see, it's, it's pretty big. The texture is so good. It feels like a quality book. This texture is different than this one and there's oh, it's so good. It arrived a little bit bumped slightly, but it's Amazon's fault. It's not Lily's fault. This color. Wow. The pictures. Wow. <laughs> First of all is the getting started pages. So it talks about the workspace, the different types of clay, how to wedge your clay, how to reclaim clay. So let's say that you break a pot before it's fired or before it's glazed, then you could always wet that clay back and it's going to come back to the right texture where you can use it again. So how to do that, the tools and materials. So I thought that this part, the getting started and the essentials part was very good for a beginner like me, just to understand the basics and get rid of some insecurities that I had. In the essential part, we talk about ways that you can hand build something. So there's different techniques. There's the pinch technique, there's a the coil technique, there's a the slab technique. So the pinching is like, let's say you take a lump of clay, you could make a cup. So you would make a hole in the middle and then you would pinch all the sides and mold the clay, pull it up and continue pinching it and you get this beautiful uneven texture and this is how I did this one. You see, I just pinched, 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 pinched until I got the height that I wanted, the thickness that I wanted and after that I could have smoothed the cup but I really liked that texture so I just left it like that. I just smoothed the bottom and made this little foot. Yeah, so that's one of the techniques. Then the coil technique I never tried but it's when you make these little coils that you wrap around on top of each other and then you're gonna smooth the clay. <laughs> it's hard to explain. And then you have the slab technique where you take a rolling pin, you roll your clay. I was about to say your dough, I'm so used to making bread. You roll your clay and then you get this even slab you can cut it, you can put some pieces together, you could take that slab and put it on a mold and mold it to a specific shape, which is how I did this little bowl. So these are the main three techniques. Then it talks about how to make handles, then the plaster and molds, which is very interesting. I'm sorry about the lighting, it keeps changing. Yeah, so plasters and molds, it's very useful when you wanna create these types of things you want to create let's say a few items that look the same then a mold would be very useful for that I assume then the decoration the glazing which is one of the points that I was a bit confused about firing techniques and types of clean so this first section up to page 90 is all about the basics and then we get into the second section 
which is kind of a recipe book. So you get different projects, you get all the steps that you need to follow, and then that's it. So it's very affordable, it's very attainable, I think. I just need to start. So let's see a few pages. So this is Lily, very serious. <laughs> She talks about how she discovered pottery. Uh, she talks about her grandparents, how they had some ceramics that inspired her and yeah. And then a beautiful picture of her shelf, which is so, so pretty. Ah. And another picture of her studio. And then we get into the getting started section. The workspace, what type of surface you need. You have to think about all these things because if your surface is not porous enough, then it's not good enough. However, you need to work from something that's not going to stick too much either. So she has different types of suggestions of what you could do to get a nice surface and then how to work with clay, the amount of water, how to also get rid of the clay or clean your tools without plugging pipes. You need to think about that. So these are all things that you don't really think about before you get to do them. And then you're like, oh shoot, all my stuff is dirty and I have no idea how to safely clean them. You have to think about the safety too. If, since you're using clay, if you're using glaze, there's a bunch of fine powder that can go in the air and you don't want to breathe that because it's minerals and you don't want to have that in your lungs. So. So yeah, and then the types of clay, the terminology of clay, which I thought was super interesting. You have the greenware, where it is all different stages of clay before it goes into the clay. Then you have the wet clay, and that's what you mold, and that's what you use to make whatever you're making. Then a day after it gets leather hard where it's not very dry, I would be able to make a mark with my nail on it, but it's the stage where you can trim your pots and work on the shape a little bit more. And then a few days later, your pot gets bone dry and you cannot work on it anymore. It's very, very dry. It's brittle. This is where you want your pot before you put it into the first firing, which is the bisque firing. All of that is very well explained in this book. You have different types of clays, how the clay changes when it dries and when it's fired. It shrinks a lot, so you have to think about that too when you do your pottery. Beautiful picture of the tools she uses. And then, yeah, we get into the different types of techniques you can use when you make, let's say, a pot or whatever you're making. So you have pinch, coil and slab. So you have a good picture here of what, what the cups look like with the different techniques. So this is the pinch, which looks like mine here, you know, but mine has a bit more texture, but you could do something like this coil is a bit more uneven compared to that last one but it's still smoother than this one and then you have the slab one which is the most perfect looking one but anyway you could still make some dents in this one you could work with the clay and make it less perfect if you wanted to so you have a lot of content in this book so let's see let's say we want to do a tea strainer you have a little explanation here, then you have the materials, just like a recipe, you will have your ingredients here and then all the preparation steps here, a beautiful picture, and then you also have some pictures of more complicated steps, so it's very nice for us visual learners. And yeah, so in the projects we have, let's see, little wonky dishes, pinched teacups, slab coffee cups with handles, slab coffee cups with faceting, overlap cup, which I'm not too sure what it is, a pinch plate, slab dinner plates. I would really like to do dinner plates. I would love to make myself a nice set. Different types of platters with embellishments on them, a fruit ball, some vases, and then you get the acknowledgements and about the author. So I would love to make you know i would love to make things like this oh this is a good coil example so you see how she rolls the coils like this and then she's gonna have a base and she just rolls the coil around the base and she's gonna pinch the coils so you get you don't get just coils like this you get something a bit more even 
and and then you're able to work on a body of whatever you're creating and in this example she did a vase so it gives me ideas for a bunch of different sculptures even that i could make it's very interesting there's a lot to think about i'm not gonna be able to work on this project before the month of may so i think it's gonna be a spring and summer project but i'm very much looking forward to this so it's a short introduction maybe to this book i really didn't want to show you too many pictures but i think you get a really good idea of the contents of this book and if you're somebody that's interested in pottery starting your own pottery era just like me i think that this could be a very good book for you i think this is good for beginners and intermediates i think if you're advanced you already know all of this but it could be good to support your fellow potters and content creators so anyway it's a very beautiful book i love the font it's very pretty high quality totally recommend this book so let me know what you think of this video let me know if you're a potter yourself or if you're thinking of getting it i really recommend so that's it short and sweet thank you for watching this video i will talk to you soon bye